Welcome to our midweek Bible study. I am so thankful that you have joined us here at First Baptist Church, North Tulsa, uh, as we continue to delve uh, and dig deeper uh, into the Word of God. Uh, for a period of time, we've been looking at a number of specific subjects, uh, belief matters, uh, where we, one month, were focusing on how important it is that we as believers uh, know what we believe, know in whom we believe, and just focus uh, on Bible doctrine and Bible teaching, uh, undergirding ourselves and strengthening ourselves uh, as it relates to the truth of the Word of God. And then just recently, we spent about a month uh, really focused on church matters. We know uh, with the pandemic and so many of us being uh, disconnected uh, from the fellowship, I thought it was very important uh, that we study somewhat uh, the doctrine of the church, uh, what the church is, uh, and why the church uh, should matter uh, to you uh, and to I. Uh, and so now I want to begin moving into uh, this idea of membership matters. Uh, in other words, why is it important for us to belong to the local church? So, so in our Bible study on tonight, uh, I'm going to talk about seven signs of a healthy church member. Seven signs of a healthy church member. Uh, our text uh, for our Bible study uh, is going to come from one of Paul's uh, letters, uh, his letter uh, to the church at Philippi. And in Philippians chapter 1, uh, we're going to look uh, at verses 1 through 8. So I invite you to join me as we look at Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. I'm reading uh, today uh, from the New King James Version of the Bible, uh, but you read along with me in whatever version that you have in hand. Philippians 1, beginning with verse 1, and it reads this way, Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Jesus Christ, all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we move to verses 3 through 8, verses 3 through 8 will be uh, really uh, the meat of our study, our study on today. So in verse 3, uh, Paul says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you with all joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. God is my witness, Paul says, how greatly I long for you with all the affection of Jesus Christ. Seven signs, my friends, of a healthy church member. Why membership matters. Now, I want you to think about or even wrestle with a couple of questions as we begin or launch uh, into our study on today. What does a healthy church and its members look like? What does a healthy church, but beyond that, what does a healthy church member look like? Uh, many of us don't know what a right relationship with the church looks like because we've had so many bad models and bad experiences uh, of what not only a healthy church is, but primarily we've had some bad models uh, and bad experiences uh, related to what a healthy or biblical church member looks like. Uh, Paul's relationship here in this text with uh, the Philippians, the church at Philippi, uh, will show you and I a, a model uh, of a healthy church member or show us a model relationship that a member has with the church. And I think all of us, uh, as we have been redeemed, as we have been saved, uh, as the Holy Spirit has immersed us universally into the body of Christ, then we, by choice, have joined a local church. Uh, we should all have it as our goal to be the best member of our church 
that we possibly can be. So uh, this letter to the Philippians is very unique because many of Paul's letters, uh, the letter that he wrote to the church at Galatia, uh, the letter he wrote to the Corinthian church, many of Paul's letters uh, are somewhat negative. He is rebuking the church. He is correcting error. He is correcting uh, heresy. But the theme of Philippians is his joy in God and his joy over the Philippians. In other words, the church or his letter to the church at Philippi, these four chapters uh, are really, uh, many call it a, a letter expressing his joy. And what has caused Paul joy is his love and affection for the church at Philippi. Paul, at the time he wrote this letter, was imprisoned in Rome awaiting his sentence. So keep in mind, uh, he was disconnected from the fellowship. Uh, he was disconnected uh, from uh, the church at Philippi. But yet, while he was awaiting sentence and chained to a Roman soldier, Roman guard, and under house arrest, you see the context in Acts chapter 28 and verse 16. So, in these circumstances, we see Paul uh, really still having joy and affection for the church at Philippi. Now, this would seem, considering the circumstances of Paul, of Paul like a time of great sorrow. Uh, it was the potential end, maybe, of his dreams and aspirations. But we find with Paul it was a time of great joy as he considered not only this wonderful church, but also considered God's faithfulness. Now, remember, as I was reading Philippians 1, 1 through 8, I said that we primarily want to focus uh, on verses 3 through 8. And so now uh, I want to move into looking at, at verses 3 through 8 and really begin to expose, uh, really begin to delve into what these verses say to us because they give us seven indicators uh, that will help you and I uh, be not only a healthy church member, uh, but a vital uh, contributing uh, individual within our local church and our local body. So, Take notes, and here we go. Uh, the first indicator of a healthy church member is this. A healthy church member thinks of others. A healthy church member thinks of others often. If you look at verse 3, uh, Paul says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And so a healthy church member thinks of others often. How often uh, do you think about those who are members of your church? I know when we see them on Sunday morning, we think about them, we ask them how they are doing, uh, we pray together in church, or maybe when we come together uh, in very various ministry meetings, but, but, but Paul would want us to say that, that an indication of a healthy church member is that uh, we think of those who belong to our church on a regular regular basis. Now, consider Paul's circumstance again. Uh, consider the typical reaction of those who are going through a difficult time. Uh, many who are going through a difficult time tend to become so self-absorbed with their own situation that they don't think about others. But Paul gives us a wonderful indicator of what it means to be a good church member, even though he was chained to a Roman guard, even though uh, he was disconnected from the fellowship under house arrest. He had other believers of his church in mind. Let that be food for thought. Uh, many of us uh, have bitter thoughts toward the church, but, but, but James says in chapter 3, verses 14 through 16, Woe to us when we have a negative emotion towards those for whom Christ died. So a healthy church member, number one, is someone who thinks about others often. The second indicator of a healthy church member is a healthy church member is someone who prays for others often. Prays for others often. Uh, if you consider with me, Paul says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And then he says, always in every prayer of mine, making request for you with all joy. Verse 4 gives us our second indicator. A 
healthy church member prays for others often. Paul says that he constantly prayed for the church with joy. You'll find in Romans chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. In Colossians 1, 9 through 10, just to name a few, that intercessory prayer for the church was a constant for Paul. Paul never prayed for people's needs, wants, or even their healings. He always prayed for the church to grow in love, knowledge of God's will, and to know God more. It was not that it was not important to pray for our temporal needs, but Paul was saying it is more important to pray for the spiritual growth of the church. Third indicator uh, is this. Healthy church members have gospel fellowship. They have gospel fellowship. Uh, if you'll take note of verses 5 and 6, Paul says, For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, that word gospel fellowship means partnership. In the Greek, it means koinonia, to have something in common with. Uh, most of our friendships are based on koinonia. Uh, we partner with, we befriend those that we have certain commonalities with. And so as a church member, we've got to ask ourselves, what do we really have in common with one another? We as members of the body of Christ have the gospel in common. Many people belong to a certain church because of ethnicity. Uh, many belong to a certain church because of a certain social status. But Paul is saying the common thing that unifies us is our partnership in the gospel. The fourth indicator of a healthy church is found in verse 6. Paul says that healthy church members have a growing confidence in God. Verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will see it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Healthy church members, we are growing in our confidence in God. That word confidence means to have trust or faith uh, in God working in a specific church. As a member of First Baptist Church North Tulsa, how much confidence do you have? Uh, that God will work in and through your church, embracing the vision, embracing and supporting the leadership of the church. Uh, again, uh, a healthy church member having confidence in God. Listen, as you belong to a church, a church is going to experience both good and bad. There are going to be ebbs and flows, but we can be confident of God's good work if we have confidence in God. That is the premise of Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and them that are called according to his purpose. So, a healthy church member has a growing confidence uh, in God. Uh, as we continue, I want you to take note. Here's number five. Uh, a healthy church members have love for one another. Healthy church members have love for one another. Consider, if you will, verses 7 and 8. Just as it is right for me to think this of you, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of God's grace. Healthy church members have a love for one another. Uh, they, 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 Paul says, uh, you have one another in your heart. You long, he says, to be with one another. And understand that, that Christian love is practical, it is forgiving, and it is sacrificial. Uh, 1 John 3 and 14 says that we know that we have passed from death unto life if we have love for the brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, in John chapter 13 and verse 35, Jesus says, they, they, they will know you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another. So there, my friends, is number five, fifth indicator of a healthy church member. We have two to go. Uh, the sixth indicator, a 
of a healthy church member is this. A healthy church members share God's grace with one another. I just read verse 7 and 8 again, but let me revisit verse 7. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of God's grace. A healthy church member shares God's grace with one another. In other words, they supported Paul uh, as a ministry from God. We support and we encourage one another as fellow church members because we view our support and encouragement to one another as a ministry that we have been given from God. Not only do we serve in various ministries in the church, men's ministry, women's ministry, usher ministry, choir ministry, but our primary ministry is to support and encourage one another. Uh, in other words, they were there for Paul. Uh, and your church members need you to be there for them just like they are there for you. And then lastly, the seventh indicator of a healthy church member is found in verse 8. Paul says, For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you with the affection of Jesus Christ. A healthy church member longs to be with church, be in the fellowship, be in the body of Christ. The same affection that Christ felt for them, the same affection that Christ feels for you and I, is the same longing and affection that you and I should have to be with one another. Paul missed them while he was in prison. He desired to be with them. And know this, that intimacy with Christ and intimacy with God will yield affection for God's people. You'll find this in 1 Thessalonians 2, 17 and 18. You'll find it in 2 Timothy 1, 3 and 4. And you'll also find it in Romans chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. So many have said, and I hear it over and over again, you know, Pastor, I'm a Christian, but I don't need to go to church to practice my faith. We've heard, heard that, that over and over again. And yes, it may be true that you don't need to go or you don't have to go, but you will want to go if you are a true Christian. Let me say that again. It may be true that you don't need to go, but if you are a true Christian, you will want to go because a sign of being a believer and of having intimacy for Christ is having love for those whom Christ loves. And so I want you to endeavor uh, as you consider your church membership be the healthiest church member that you possibly can. Try to implement these seven indicators in your life as a believer, as a local church member, and then pray and resolve within your own spirit and your own soul to be the best member of your church that you possibly can. My friends, I thank you for joining us for this midweek Bible study. We are going to continue over the next few weeks to look uh, and why membership matters. And in fact, we want you first and foremost to be a member of the body of Christ universally by giving your hand and your heart to God in faith, confessing with your mouth Jesus as Savior. If you've done that and you are disconnected from a local church, we want to encourage you uh, to become a part of a local church. If you're in the area of the city of Tulsa, we would love to have you as a member uh, of First Baptist Church North Tulsa. Again, God bless you. Thank you for joining us for this Bible study on membership matters. As, as I close, uh, I want to whisper prayer. Uh, and as I pray, I'm going to pray that the seed and the nuggets of God's word that have been shared on today will be planted, firmly rooted, grounded in the good soil of your heart, and that you may grow, benefit, and become a healthier church member. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this time of study, this time of sharing your word with the people of God. And God, we thank you for those who are viewing and pray, God, that as we've shared from Philippians 1, 1 through 8, pray, God, that the wonderful nuggets that we have shared from this word 
uh, will help all of us, God, not only grow in grace and in knowledge of you, but in a very practical and real sense, help us to become better, more committed followers of Jesus Christ and members of our church. God, we know that it takes all to help make churches healthy. And so, God, we just pray that you will allow the seed and the nuggets of this word to be firmly planted and rooted in the hearts of those who are studying on tonight. Father, we thank you for your word. Pray that you would richly bless us and watch over us, God, until we meet again. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God bless you, and I'll see you all next week.